This is the first of a series of videos where I'm going to try and give a brief overview of RenWeb's new tool for teachers and administrators called RenWeb 1. So the concept behind RenWeb 1 is for years RenWeb has been trying to solve the problem of getting their RenWeb platform onto many different clients, onto not just PCs as it was running on in the late 90s and in the early days of RenWebs, but onto Macs, onto tablets, onto Chromebooks, onto any and all devices that are used in education. So their method has changed from time to time in terms of how they want people to use RenWeb on different clients. But this summer they announced with a huge push at their power conference, RenWeb 1. So the major distinction behind RenWeb 1 is that it's programmed in a totally different way. It's written in HTML5, which is uh, really efficient, very modern, and it's basically the way that most of the internet is written in. So the vast majority of the new features of RenWeb 1 are not requiring Silverlight or an external plugin. They just run natively in your browser. There are still some things that haven't been completely recoded for RenWeb 1. And for those features, it does jump you to the existing portal version using Silverlight. So it is important still that you use a browser that supports Silverlight to get all the functionality of RenWeb 1, and it is important that you make sure your plugins are enabled on that browser to use RenWeb 1. So this is the login screen for RenWeb 1. It's really clean, as a lot of the stuff is. It looks really great, um, and it's simply at login.renweb.com. So I've got my credentials, and after I start the login process, I'm greeted with a really empty blank canvas that doesn't really show me a lot, and I won't say everything's hidden because that, that would be uh, <laughs> probably a negative way of describing it, but everything is, is placed over here on this left-hand bar. So really, this is just a giant workspace that'll get filled up as you use RenWeb 1. Um, but before we jump into all the different options of what you can do, probably it'd be good to familiarize yourself with the system settings, which are over here. So right now you can see I'm on the Benita campus, but if I wanted to change that to the junior and high school or whatever campus I'm working at and the year, I can modify that there and just click apply. After I'm done with that and I know I'm in the right place, working with the right year, um, and that's really important if you need to be doing something unique, like uh, going back and checking a previous grade book, or if you're working in the office and you need to make sure you're updating something from a previous year, you really want to confirm that. Uh, but for most people, the system defaults are basically what you need to be using and you won't need to modify that setting too much. But then after that, I see all these different options on the left hand side and most of these should look familiar with the exception of my classroom. My classroom is a brand new feature that I'm going to really jump into in the next video, but it is the way that RenWeb wants teachers to be using RenWeb. It's the new portal utility, the new <laughs> place that teachers can and should be entering their grade books, entering any demerits, uh, checking on student progress, organizing their classrooms, communicating, all of those things can now be done in one place in my classroom. And it's really clean, very fast, very modern. Um, and there's some things that I'd love to see added to it, but it's, it's really great for being so new and so fresh. Um, but then you get people, which is just the organization of different types of relationships you have in the school district. So students, that makes sense. If I need a student file, I'll click on students. And you can see this is loading in the background. This is actually using Silverlight, but it's pretty efficient. Um, so now I see a list of all the junior high school students, 502 of them. If I wanted to query down to a specific grade or apply an advance filter, I can do that there. If I wanted to search and say, hey, um, let's see, how many kids do we have named Michael? There's a bunch of Michaels in our school. I can pick on one of them. And then I'm gonna see a bunch of information about Michael. I probably shouldn't get crazy looking at that during this video. Okay, so that is the student section. Hopefully that makes sense in, in terms of what you would wanna do with your students and transcripts, report cards, behavior, parent-teacher conferences. Um, that and much more medical records are all stored under that student column. Family is very similarly, but most of this is used for correspondence or for updating of emergency contact information and that type of thing. That's all lives in families. Staff and faculty, you guys don't typically as teachers or really even as office staff use the staff feature too much, but there's a lot of useful information here. And I, I'll <laughs> free to jump into my uh, staff page and show you what it looks like. Uh, I, don't, I don't think there's anything too private on this, um, but this is the grid system that RenWeb uses for everything. This is contextual. What I mean by that is if your browser is smaller, it's not gonna fill up the grid, but notice how it, it puts more grids and kind of um, reforms the page as the size of your browser. So you always wanna make sure you're, you're giving as much screen real estate to this side as you possibly can. So this is your basic grid. Um, you really should just familiarize yourself with the 
big categories, education, uh, schedule, all of these different things, observations. Um, but you can see um, under education, you, you've got places to keep up with your degrees, with your CEUs, um, all of those different options are there. And if you ever needed to, um, it's, most people don't have permissions, but this is where uh, people go to not just set their username, but to set their password for RunWeb and to update all their contact information. And a lot of those features aren't available for faculty, but for site secretaries and administrators, um, this is the page that you go to do that now. Okay, so that's staff. Academics should be pretty intuitive. You do have a separate place to get to all of your courses and classes. We're not gonna jump into that right now. A grade calculator, this is a, a very seldomly used feature but it actually is really helpful if you're trying to figure out where a student's going to land um, and graduation planner this is a counseling office feature that basically tries to make sure that all of the uh, course requirements for different programs whether it be the uc or whether it be just the general ed um, can be met for graduation admissions this is where our admissions office lives day in and day out they are putting in inquiries they are changing student status from being pre-enrolled to enrolled and that is for them attendance i hope that makes sense um this is just a really different place other than my platform cl my classroom where you can go to not just see a student's student records and classroom records but you where you can actually modify attendance records and it's pretty handy so this is mainly used for site secretaries Cafeteria, we don't utilize. Cash register, we don't utilize. Communications, we definitely will utilize. Um, this is a really straightforward way of sending email. It might not be as fancy or as robust as something like Outlook, but it really does give you a lot of options for creating a group email. I can show you that really quickly. So um, after it loads the general screen, then you're just going to want to basically select who you're sending the email to by clicking on the to button and then saying like, okay, I want to send it to any of these students individually. Or I can say like, hey, I want to send it to all the eighth and ninth graders. Or in addition to that, you can say like, hey, I just want to send it to one of my classes. So that would be under advanced and I could just search for like a advanced film class. Yeah, I did vid. Here's advanced film first period. And I can say apply filter. Here's the enrolled students populate. After I say I want to send it to the student, and to their correspondence people. So that would be their parents and anybody that is set to receive the communication for that student. It puts the email addresses here. Now, some people will tell you like you can go ahead and copy and paste that into Outlook. It, it does work, it really does. Um, you have to know how to do that well in terms of like putting into a BCC field and things like that, but it does work if you wanted to use Outlook or something. But I could just say test email. I'm not gonna send this. And then in my body section, I can send attachments. I can actually uh, send pictures. I can send hyperlinks. I can format it to look kind of cool if I wanted to, um, to try and make my email stand out. That's nice. And that's how you do all that. After you're done with that, you can just hit send and you are done. It will shoot off all of those emails at once. If you want to carbon copy yourself for a record, and if you wanted to CC somebody else on it, you can go back into two and say like, hey, I want to add a staff member as a CC option to it. It's all right there. Okay, um, so that is creating an email message. Report manager, as teachers, we don't utilize as much as we honestly should, um, or as staff members, they, they use this all the time. But this is where you can really get a huge, quick, general overview of a lot of information that's stored in the web. Everything from academics to um, custom reports that we are not going to uh, get into today to creator reports, which is the way to get uh, the basic data out of RunWeb. If you want to save something as an Excel file, if you want to save it as a CSV, that's all under creator report. Discipline, um, that's really useful for not just administrators, but for um, a parent teacher conference where you need to just kind of check and see like, hey, is this a consistent problem I've been having with a student? Um, you can pull the, that student's file and basically see every demerit. You can see um, where that student's at in, in terms of um, have they had parent teacher conferences for similar issues? And it's a really useful resource for that. Uh, grade book, again, just a great way of quickly querying tons of different options for uh, grade book. So please like familiarize yourself with the different options in report manager. It does come in handy. We don't need medical too much. That's a, a front office thing that uh, really, if you're a site secretary or if you're a specific staff, you will want to investigate the different reports that are inside of the medical option. Um, but this is a very powerful, unique custom tool specifically to handle all the medical information. Um, so if you have access to that, and you need to use it, please familiarize yourself with it, but I don't want to jump too much into it right this second. Um, 
under system configuration, I hope you guys don't need to use this too much. I've had to really familiarize myself with web forms and all of these different options over the summer. Um, but it is something that is really nuanced. It is super specific. And to be candid, all of the functionality is not, it's not completely built out yet. Um, it's there, but it's not completely functional. So I hope just looking at this left-hand sidebar, you get a general idea of how they're organizing RunWeb 1 and how they want you to be using it. And please do not be afraid to go to login.runweb.com and begin to explore um, not just my classroom, but other resources that you could be using this coming school year. And hopefully you'll check back on another video where we will jump into my classroom and um, really specific features that are inside of that. Thanks so much.